Hello, electric riders. This current topic might shock you. So let's roll. When the hoverboard was a craze in 2015 to 2016, we saw hoverboards it's combust and die in a blaze of glory. It was these hoverboard fires that led the FAA to include hoverboards as not allowed on airlines. The big picture, all lithium ion batteries can catch fire. But why does this occur? I'm getting inside. Basically, there are three types of lithium ion batteries the cylinder, prismatic, pouch type. The cylinder batteries have consistent results. They withstand highest internal temperatures without deforming. They're much cheaper than the other two, so ideal for mass production. These are heavy, and their shape does not allow them to be densely packed. The individual battery cell has a positive and negative electrode. The electrodes are submerged in a liquid called an electrolyte, which allows for the movement of ions and consists of lithium salt and organic solvents. It is these organic solvents which are the leading fire hazard in lithium ion batteries. It is volatile and inflammable when it has to work at high temperatures. Furthermore, the positively charged electrode or cathode in the battery contains oxygen which may be released if the battery is subjected to specific stresses. In other words, an internal short, excessive heat, and more. This means that the lithium-ion batteries have all the elements needed to self-sustain a fire. One of the toxic fumes is carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide has over 200 times the affinity for hemoglobin than does oxygen. Oxygen molecules can't compete with carbon monoxide. The person can become hypoxic and eventually succumb, so please make sure you get proper ventilation and stay as far away as possible. Let's take a look at a single lithium-ion battery externally. It is quite alarming when you realize that the negative charge is so dangerously close to the positive charge. The only thing separating them is this thin piece of plastic material. A simple loose wire touching both can cause a spark and a short circuit. When dendrites form, the dendrites can be enough to close the gap between the positive and negative electrode. Imagine a battery pack not well isolated and well secured being tossed around when a rider is riding in rough terrain. Over time, this constant rubbing of components can cause wearing down of this mylar-like covering on the battery. Any one of the several battery packs can have a short leading to increased temperature and possibly a thermal runway. What are the causes that can predispose these flammable electrolytes to go into a thermal runaway, leading to a fire? Number one, poor manufacturing resulting in metal impurity being mixed in. Metallic particles or impurities can seep into the lithium ion cell during the manufacturing process. Manufacturers need controlled clean rooms during the manufacturing of batteries. Number two, design flaws. When companies try to pack as much battery as possible into their tiny compartments, this can lead to a less secure separation of their battery packs, as well as less shielding from the bumps and crashes in the PEVs. Compromising on the design can cause damage to the electrodes or the separator. Either of these can result in a short circuit. The absence of a proper cooling system or vent can cause battery temperatures to rise as the flammable electrolyte heats up. Number three, poor quality control. Number four, improper storage of your wheel by keeping it close to a heat source or near a fire or stored in a car trunk during the hot summer months can cause it to explode. Does cold affect the health of the battery? While the obtained capacity will be very much affected, so don't expect your range to be as long. Don't exert your wheel too much as it can result in a cutout. Number five, internal damage from a crash. 
During a crash, the battery pack can be penetrated, resulting in a short circuit similar to a metal impurity during the manufacturing process. This can result in a fire. Number six, DIY battery packs made by unprofessional hands. Number seven, high voltage charging or excessive discharging of the battery during high intensity rides requiring max speed or steep inclines where the motor keeps asking for more current draw from the battery can eventually lead to rapid degradation of battery health. Number eight, use of low quality parts. Manufacturers cutting corners by using cheap low grade wires can cause them to overheat easily. Poor quality of electronic components of the BMS can increase the risk of battery failures. The BMS protects the battery pack from operating outside of its safe operating area. It should be able to prevent overcharging, balance the battery packs, or detect a short. The failure of the BMS can result in a thermal runway, resulting in explosions. Number nine, using poorly insulated chargers or third-party chargers from disreputable companies can damage the battery if the charger shorts or generates heat near the battery. Enough damage can result in battery fires. Number 10, water intrusion into the battery pack via either the wheel having previously been submerged or just poor protection from the elements. Number 11, charging to 80 to 90% routinely and not allowing the cells to properly balance. Number 12, a motherboard having previously been shorted out or damaged leading to damage to the battery pack. Number 13, regularly draining to low battery percentage. Basically, wheels need a certain amount of power to move you. Power is voltage times current equals to power or watts. So as voltage drops, current goes up because the amount of power needed to do something doesn't change. Current causes heat. Heat cooks the enamel on the motor windings, the MOSFETs, and the battery cells. Therefore, the least heat that is generated, the longer things last. Meaning the more voltage a battery has, the fewer amps that are needed to do the same amount of work and the cooler things are. There have been several AUC storage and container fires last year. I sincerely wish both eWheels and Yuko will be able to re- recover fully from these tragedies. There is a certain battery pack of the 900 watt hour 21700 format that are highly suspect. These are the LGM 50LT cells used by Bigod. These battery packs will be undergoing battery replacement. The Gatway Bigod wheels are consuming more power than the cells can provide. Over time, this allowance of a more maximum output from the batteries compared to other EUC companies such as KS and InMotion has led to excessive discharging of the battery, leading to gradual deterioration, eventually causing a thermal runway. It has been recommended by eWheels that the 900 watt hour battery packs in the 21700 format are most at risk, specifically the Nikola Plus MSP RS. There is a targeted recall of the battery packs in the Nikola Plus 1800 watt hour slash 100 volt, which were shipped to customers between December 19, 2019 to April 16, 2020. There is less risk for the three to four times battery packs in the EXN and the EX and Monster Pro. The stress per cell should be substantially less in the 24S 6P. 24S 8P configurations. In other words, Bigode should implement better preventative measures that will have a maximum output current limiting in their firmware. The Gotway wheels are consuming more power than the cells can provide. Manufacturers like Kingsong and InMotion are probably able to use the LGM 50LT because they have better current rate limiting in their firmware as well as other features. Besides the lack of safety mechanisms in either the board, BMS, or these LGM 50LT cells, there seems two main factors at play. The accelerated aging dendritic formation by operating outside the operating spec and pack manufacturing issues. A lithium-ion battery 
operating under abnormal conditions such as overcharging or lower temperature charging or firmware that allows the current to be drawn beyond the limits of a battery cell specs can lead to a harmful phenomenon called lithium dendrite growth or lithium plating. Lithium dendrites are metallic microstructures that form on the negative electrode during the charging process. Lithium dendrites are formed when extra lithium ions accumulate on the anode surface and cannot be absorbed into the anode in time. They can cause short circuits and lead to catastrophic failures and even fires. Several Samsung Galaxy Note 7 batteries caught on fire in 2016 and the investigation revealed the mechanism that lithium dendrites caused an internal short circuit. This would explain instances of brand new wheels catching on fire, as well as the battery container fire from earlier last year. With the LightTech battery project that eWheels contracted with, the packs needed to be self-contained for providing independent alerting for elevated operating temperatures, cell failure, or other malfunction. Compared to the LG M50LT, the Samsung 50E offers a 25% performance margin, 7.5 amp versus 10 amp sustained, runs cooler without any nominal capacity loss. Even on cost grounds, the two cell types are pretty comparable. The LightTech setup with which eWheels has partnered with results in the following safety protocols. In the 24S4P set, Current drawn from 30 to 60 amps is quite safe. However, when more than 60 amps is demanded by the motor, the BMS will easily trigger the overtemp protections, temperature more than 70 degrees Celsius, and causes the fuse to blow out if more than 10 minutes drawing. When current drawn is more than 100 amps, the fuses blow within a few seconds. This is amazing tech and can certainly prevent a thermal runway from occurring with its preemptive approach. This can save both the rider as well as our property. If you haven't been abusing your wheel regularly, it runs fine and charges to 100%, then from my experience and what I have read, these are enough reassurance that my wheel should be fine. It is quite commendable and a step in the right direction that e-wheels and now alien rides have opted to have the professional and responsible company Litech take care of their battery supply. This is certainly a significant step to a safer ride for all of us. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. It would really help me out. Until next time.